My name is Lauren Parks, and this podcast or this show is going to be a lot about um, just the next fitness journey that I'm going on, which really has a lot to do with um, looking at fitness from a long-term perspective. Recently, there's been you know, a lot more science that shows certain ways to train your fitness and certain ways to sort of optimize your lifestyle routines to um, create a just to really create a long-term I guess blueprint that anyone could use that really helps give you the energy gives you the strength and gives you also the long-term vision for uh, just how you can live a long life with more better years and and really there's this kind of this this topic or word called health span that's become super interesting to me and you know I've obviously I've had a few of my own fitness journeys uh, over the past. One, you know, a couple being Ironman, doing a few Ironmans, obviously having done several triathlons as well as just a lot of strength work. And that has kind of um, opened my eyes to just different things in different ways. And so um, with the Ironman, obviously there's a lot that you learn through cardio and fueling and rest and that sort of thing. And then with strength work, there's a lot that you learn with, you know, obviously injury prevention and trying to lift properly to be able to continue to grow without getting the major setbacks and so anyways that has kind of that has led me to this place this place that i'm at right now and where we're going for the next really the next two and a half three years um starting last september i did a dexa scan and the the reason that i did the dexa scan was to um just get a better understanding of just the absolute condition of my body you know what's happening and also the reason that i wanted to do the dexa scan at that time was to get a better um, understanding of what's happening under the hood like there's this new there's this new term in fitness called under the hood where it's becoming super um it's becoming super efficient and also reasonably economical to start to look at what's happening internally and really there's a lot of people that think that's going to be the way that medicine and just me- medicine in general is going to be going forward. It's going to be a lot to do with just personalized personalized plans where you can literally see how your body's doing and what you got to do to get it to be optimal. And so that's really where this whole DEXA scan thing has started. And it's gotten me to better understand like what's the absolute value of DEXA scan, why, you know, why do DEXA scan and how you can use DEXA scan as a tool to help you better understand, um, where, where your fitness is or just the absolute condition of your physical body. And then also how you can make changes to start to predict where you can be in say six months or a year or two years or three years, five years, that sort of thing. And so, um, going back to September, we did the DEXA in September and it was end of September, uh, first part of October. And, um, at that time it was the first time I've ever done a DEXA scan. And so I didn't know what to expect. You go into a, um, uh, it's, you know, really a pretty small kind of clinic type setting. They have a table that's, um, you lay on and there's like this camera system that rolls or kind of goes across the top of you and it kind of, I think it must take like 10 minutes or something. It takes like a bunch of images and you just lay super still on a table and, and yeah, it's super simple. I mean, you can go in and be in and out, I think in like 15 minutes. Um, and so it's not like it's, it's not a, it's not like anything to be, um, uncertain about. I think, you know, it's something that anyone can do very, very easily. And so you lay on the table they take the images and then they print the report and and this place that i went to also happens to have an app that tracks all the all the information that you get from your report and then you can download that app and then look at all your stuff kind of whenever you want so it's not like you have to just wait for them to do it and you only have one copy i thought that was kind of cool because then you can go and you know look at it and the other cool thing about this app that this place uses is the app kind of shows you what you can do to um, optimize your longevity. Like there's when you first get your DEXA scan results, it tells you like a body composition score. And then 
the next thing it shows you is a longevity score, which was something I'd never seen before. And essentially, they predict, not predict, it's not like an actual length of life score, but like my longevity score came back at 86. And it's, um, it's more of a marker of just how your body's aging than it is like the overall length of your life. And um, so they, the average for everyone, the average longevity score for everyone on this app is 78. And so um, mine came back at 83 at that time. And then I, between then and now, I've actually done some work to um, continue uploading information, trying to, I guess, improve or increase my longevity score. And I was able to gain three years from then till now. Um, I went from 83 to 86 just through heart rate, resting heart rate, and lowering my resting heart rate essentially just kind of, you know, reduces stress, wear, inflammation on the body, that sort of thing. And so anyways, um, then it gives you a lean mass, a total lean mass, gives you a total fat mass, gives you a total bone mass, and also like a T-score uh, for your bone. And then there's this, the end of the app has this part that's called the artificial intelligence, like optimization part of the app, which I thought was the most interesting part of it in you can, so there's, the, there's like five metrics. There's your lean mass, there's your fat mass, there's um, your resting heart rate, there's your VO2 max, and then the fifth one was um, visceral fat. So there's these five categories that you can move around on this, um, this artificial intelligence scale. And the more you move them around and the more you optimize or get them closer to where they should be, it kind of gives you it shows you how your, your longevity score can change. And so, uh, the, you know, when I started playing with those metrics, I started to see like, oh, you can actually change, I could change my score pretty easily from 83 to 86, and then also from 86 to 100 just through doing work. And that's all it is, is just work. Um, so like you can improve your VO2 max, you can gain lean mass, you can lower body fat, you can lower your resting heart rate, and lower visceral fat. So essentially, those five categories, just by moving the metrics around, you essentially change how your body ages. It, it gives you an L score, but it, it's, really just, it's really just changing how your body ages. I mean, that's what it is. And so um, that kind of opened my eyes to this whole idea of like, you can literally do work today to change the outcome of your body's aging. And that was something that I'd never, like, was kind of like a little bit of a, it was just super eye-opening. It was something that I was never, I'd never seen before. And I certainly wasn't familiar with that whole idea of just like, okay, you can adjust VO2 max, you can adjust resting heart rate, you can adjust lean mass, you can adjust body fat, adjust visceral fat. And every time you adjust that metric more towards optimal, your body starts to act and heal and age at a younger rate and pace. And so... It's just, I mean, it's got me really pretty obsessed with this idea of like, how far can I push? How far can I push this? Like, where can I go with this? If I was to get all five of those metrics into an optimal category, like how far can I go? Can I get my L score to 100? And, um, you know, that, that was the first question I had, like, can I gain 20 years? Can I age 20 years slower? You know, I just, for some reason, I just right away thought, like, what's the best I can do? And, and obviously, that's something that, you, you know, um, I became interested in trying to do. And so that was in September. And then while that was happening, I was becoming aware of um, Peter Atia's book and also, like, just his work and um, longevity and health span and that's where I started to hear from him. Like he's obviously been a doctor for, you know, 20 plus years. And his whole obsession has been like, how do you, how do you prevent disease? How do you prevent illness? How do you prevent these things that slow you down that make you age quicker and make diseases come on quicker and all that sort of thing. And so, um, it just became more and more interesting the more I looked at it. And you know, early on, there was there was he was saying that you can super easily, not super easily, but it is possible to reduce your aging by 20 years or change your longevity score by by 20 years from your actual age. And um, and so it's like, well, when someone says you can do something, of course, you're going to want to try and do it. Right. And so um, anyways, that kind of got me to this point where it's like, well, 
now I know where I'm starting and, you know, tomorrow, Tuesday, we'll get a better look at like how the last six months has progressed for me with the strategies that I've been using to try and optimize this whole thing. And then from there, we can make adjustments to say like, hey, either this is working or this is, you know, these are things that are working and these are things that we should change to try and just better optimize this whole system. And so um, there's another thing that I wanted to talk about with just the DEXA that I think is uh, important to everyone. So um, I, I learned about this uh, in the book Outlive that Peter writes. He says that, you know, in terms of just internally, the inside of your body, there's a there's visceral fat, which is essentially just when your skin, so subcutaneous fat is the skin, you know, that's the fat that forms on your skin. And then there's visceral fat, which is the fat that um, starts to go inside internally around your ab abdominal organs, your heart, into your muscles um, after your skin reserves are full. And he was saying that like everyone's skin can hold a different amount of, of fat. And he said that um, like this, it's just something, it's just totally new to me. I didn't know anything about this before, but he was saying that essentially when you're, when you start to get like, you know, going back to the DEX results, when I got my DEX results, it showed that I had like a half a pound of visceral fat, like 0.45 pounds of visceral fat. And it was saying like, you know, I remember thinking like, that's a pretty low number, you know, but it was saying like the app was saying I should get that to zero. And I'm thinking like, oh, I, I didn't, that was just something new to me. I didn't really know much about that, but Anyways, he was, you know, so then I was like, well, why does that want to be zero? Like, why do you want your visceral fat number to be zero? And why is it okay to have like, say, 10 or 12? Or there's some number for everyone that's healthy for uh, body fat, but visceral fat, the number should be zero. And so that kind of, um, it just opened my curiosity, like, why is that? And what's that all about? And so I got a little bit of a better understanding about it through his book. And essentially, um, the long story is like, as your as your body starts to um, pour extra fat into the muscles around the heart, you know, into the around the abdominal organs, essentially that starts to change how glucose flows through your body, which is essentially the fuel that your body uses to perform, essentially. And so he was saying that, you know, like if you start to get that visceral fat you know, marbling into your muscles, well, essentially your muscles aren't able to uh, pull glucose into them as well. And um, without, I'm trying to kind of simplify it as much as possible, but essentially your your body will, will start to resist allowing glucose to flow into the muscles, which the muscles are what move us, right? And so um, he was saying that, that that starts to create somewhat of an insulin insulin resistance inside your body and then that turns in you know if you start getting that that's like the beginning of you know um type 2 diabetes which is um you know completely lifestyle completely lifestyle related diabetic condition that comes through just poor choices with um nutrition sleep stress you know not moving and so anyways he was saying that you know, essentially you got to be using your muscles, you got to be using the body, you got to be you got to be keeping the body active, and then also not letting too much you know not letting too much visceral fat flow into the muscles, into the organs, and that sort of thing, because that's the beginning of all the other problems that start to come from just poor lifestyle choices. And so that was, you know, to hear that was like okay, that kind of makes sense now. And now I understand why you literally want no visceral fat and why, you know, some body fat's obviously okay, but just the right type. And the other thing that I thought was super interesting was that he was saying um, that stress and poor sleep, you know, creates, creates cortisol, which is like a stress. Um, maybe it's a stress hormone. I think it is. And he said that cortisol can literally make your body, um, turn you know, turn extra energy into visceral fat instead of subcutaneous fat. And I know this is like whatever. It's it's a little bit technical stuff, but it's not super it's not super technical. I'm trying to kind of make it sort of simple, but it's it all makes sense when you start to understand like these are the things that are happening inside the body, and these are the reasons why you want to understand that 
this is what's important. And the only way, and he said, the only way you can measure visceral fat is through DEXA. And he said, like, he thinks that every single person should be doing a DEXA scan. Every single person should be getting a look at what's happening internally. He said, the only way you can measure that is through DEXA. You can't do it through um, pinch tests. You can't do it through any other form of body fat testing. And so, um, you know, he says, like, he's kind of a believer that every single person should do a DEXA scan for that reason alone. And, you know, that can kind of help you make choices about, you know, whether you're you're trending in a good direction or not. And the other thing that I thought was super interesting on that note was um, he said that you can have people who are obese with, you know, healthy, healthy metabolism, and they're in better shape than people who are thin with unhealthy metabolism. So he said, like, you can take a thin person who doesn't carry much fat on their skin, but they carry a lot of visceral fat. Like, they look super thin, but their body just stores their fat internally, and that creates a ton of metabolic dysfunction. And you can take a person who is more obese, and they have very healthy metabolic function, and they're not going to start to get the diseases and illness that the per the thin person would with, you know, the high amounts of visceral fat. And so... That was something that was really eye-opening to me. And, it's, and again, it's like the only way you can determine or even just get a look at what's happening internally with those categories is through doing a DEXA scan. And so there's a lot of reasons, I think, why people should do DEXA scan. Obviously, this is just some of the reasons that I have found initially that are um, super interesting and that I think, um, you know, I didn't know about even just a few weeks ago or a couple months ago. And so um, it's new to me. And so then... Um, the other thing that we were going to be doing on, is it Tuesday, Tuesday morning, is the, uh, the blood test. And that's one that I've been obviously super curious to get a look at for quite a while because it's like um, after DEXA, that's the other thing that's super important is like what's happening inside your blood, you know. And then also there's a lot of metrics, you know, testosterone uh, for men and also especially for anyone who's trying to develop um, muscle, you know, testosterone levels are a big part of it that have to do with energy and developing um, muscle. And then also you get you get all the stress, uh, the stress levels, like if there's certain things that are triggering unhealthy stress and that sort of thing, you're going to get all those um, results on the blood test as well. So that's Tuesday morning. And so it's Tuesday morning, it's the blood test, and then it's DEXA midday. And then after that, the other test that really um, determines, I guess, just how well your body's functioning and healing and energy and that sort of thing is VO2 max. And so um, we're going to be testing that uh, probably a couple weeks after the DEXA and after the blood. And the reason I've decided to do that is because I don't know how much blood they're going to take. You know, I don't know how exhausted I'm going to be. You know, is, it, is there a period of time that it takes for you to regain your total energy um, after a blood draw? You know, do they take a lot of blood? Is it a little bit of, little bit of blood? What is it? And so... Um, so that'll be the f kind of the third test. So it's going to be blood, DEXA, and then VO2 max. And um, have you ever heard of VO2 max test? Do you know anything about them? Okay. So VO2 max test is like an extremely intense um, aerobic activity. You essentially get hooked up to a bike or a treadmill or whatever it is, and they're going to hook all this gear up to your face that tracks your breathing and um, it tracks how much oxygen is coming into your body and then how much CO2 is coming out. So essentially can determine like how much how much oxygen are you absorbing, uh, absorbing essentially. And, and then it's, um, they're going to get a measurement of your body um, and then they'll determine how much oxygen you're absorbing in a period of time. And so anyways, that one you have to be ready and physically prepared to do because it's going to be a 20 minutes all out effort to the point of like almost, you know, maybe almost puking, literally. Either sprinting or you're on a bike and you're giving it everything you have and they measure for 20 minutes. That way they can get an accurate uh, data set of what's, of what's uh, coming in in terms of oxygen and what's going out. And so that one will be a couple weeks after the blood. And then that one will... You know, obviously, I talked about it a little bit in the last show, but that one really, VO2 max is kind of the primary driver in um, 
longevity and reducing aging because it's all about how much oxygen can you get in the cell, how efficient can you get your cell to be, and and that's kind of its own category, which we talked a little bit about last show. But um, And then after that, it's just putting all the other pieces together. There's obviously the sleep. You want to be optimizing sleep. If you're not optimizing sleep, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be, you know, things are not going to be functioning super well. And that's, you know, kind of its whole, a whole nother, a whole nother um, category of its own. And so anyways, I, that's kind of the, the big pieces that I think we're going to be looking at kind of for next week and the next couple of weeks. And then also, um, and also beyond. And so I wanted to give that obviously somewhat short, brief introduction to those pieces. And then also um, looking at those, you know, obviously I have kind of my projections and predictions as far as where I want to go with them in the future. But um, yeah, I guess I'm just curious and excited to see the results on Tuesday and start to kind of see where we go from there. And so I think... Yeah, I do a little bit. Um, like, I, I guess I'm super curious. Like, how much lean mass have I put on? How much body fat have I lost? I'm hoping that I've put on a couple pounds of lean mass. Like, I'm just hoping. I, and if I can, if I've ha if I have two and a half pounds of lean mass, I'll be happy. Anything two and a half or more. If I have less than two and a half, if I've gained less than two and a half pounds of lean mass, I might be kind of wondering like, why is there a reason why? Because I've been training pretty. Uh, consistently and with a lot of intensity um, and then body fat like I know I've gotten a little bit leaner so it's like you know I guess the big question is just how much you know I can just tell that I'm carrying less body fat than I was before just by looking at um, seeing how my body is changing physically you know from the outside and so those are the two things that I'm really curious about the other thing is the vo2 max which I have no I've never done it obviously and I don't have you know obviously we did the DEXA once before but Having never done the VO2 max, I have no idea what to expect, but I'm like, if I can be in the 50s, that'd be awesome. And, um, you know, obviously I want to try and get that number as close, you know, well into the 60s at some point. I know if you train, if you train smart and efficiently, you should be able to get your VO2 max into the 60s, which is um, a pretty dramatic number in terms of just helping your body heal and, and age better. And so I would say those are the initial expectations and those are the initial areas that I do want to... Um, learn more about and optimize going forward and then on top of that just start to look at obviously the sleep better i've been tracking my sleep somewhat for the last six months but it's it's sort of um sleep is still a little bit of a mystery not totally but kind of it's almost like i don't know why some days i get so much better sleep and i'm doing the same things as i am the day, days before so it's like that's still something i'm trying to understand like what can you do what are the actual things you can do to predictably get the sleep that you want to get, you know, and what does it take to, you know, do that day after day, week after week to be able to, you know, I guess, predictably tell, tell where you're going to be and that sort of thing. So um, I think that's kind of the big pieces that I'm going to be looking at going forward. So I don't know if there's a ton more that I wanted to touch on, but I know that that's kind of where we're starting. So I mean, what do you, what are your thoughts? Is that kind of, April 25th, yeah. Um, it's six and a half months. Yeah. So I think October yeah, October 25th to April 25th be six. So it's six and a half. Yeah, before I was just not, like I wasn't super picky on nutrition. I was not as picky on sleep. There's a lot of things that I'm doing different now that I... Um, I would say a lot more optimal, you know, the nutrition side, of course, way more optimal. Uh, my sleep is more optimal. My training, I'm definitely a lot more picky about not wasting time when I'm in the gym, you know, 45 minutes. If I'm in there for 45 minutes, like I want to use every single minute. I'm not let, like, I'm just not as willing to, I'm just not as willing to um, waste the time because my schedules, obviously, we all have a schedule and it's like, it just keeps getting more and more busy. So it's like, how do you optimize your time? And I've been training like, I'm glad I'm training by myself. I'll just say that because I'd rather other people not see me training. It's just, when you're training with a, in, in a lot of intensity, it's almost like 
I don't know. It's just you're locked into your own world. You're kind of locked into your own zone. It's just, I think it'd be a lot. I, I don't know. Would I be more distracted in a public gym? I'm not sure. But obviously, I got the home gym and all the weights there. And it's just, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of fun doing it that way. Yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of the big thing is like, you know, that we talk. Yeah, and I think that those are the reasons why a lot of people should be doing it, should be doing it. I think also just this thing that I'm doing now is something that we should. I guess this is probably my final. This is This is just how I'll conclude. This is my conclusion. Our parents' generation didn't have access to technology like we do today in terms of just being able to understand certain parts of your health and your fitness through using technology, which is making it super efficient. If you live in 2023 in the U.S. and you're not using technology, you're not using all the things that people have worked hard on for like worked, you know, very, very hard at for decades to make it easier and more affordable for us to understand what's happening with our health and our well-being. Like, I just, I don't know why, wh like, my question would be like, why are you not doing it? It's becoming more and more affordable every day, and it helps you live with a, a much, you know, I don't know, like, you're able to just predictably kind of, I guess, navigate the different diseases and illnesses that are always coming towards all of us. Like everyone's, everyone's, everyone's pre got like your DNA has these things that are on it from all the generations before you, right? In your family, maybe it's diabetes, maybe it's heart disease, maybe it's cancer, maybe it's Alzheimer's. All these things are in your DNA, and you can literally take action today to either delay those by 20 years or completely stop them. So it's like, my question is like, why would you not be doing it? And there, to me, there's almost like, there's no reason why, I don't know. Like the, the thing that, the thing that I, I think so much about is like this stuff, it's sort of like kind of becoming, it's, the, the messaging is starting to come out right now today with all these all these categories and how this is like a lifestyle thing that people should be doing. This is how you should be training. This is this is the lifestyle that people should be, you know, incorporating into what they do, no matter who you are and what you do. Like I'm, you know, I have a business. I we have a construction business. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a, a brother, a son. All these things, right? And you know, you want to have energy to do all the things you want to do, and you want to have energy to do them for a long time. So it's like. How do you make choices today that can help you live a longer, healthier life where you can do these things with kind of better optimal energy and, you know, you can optimize your strength and you can be strong and energetic late into life. Like, why would you not be wanting to do it? And it's just to me, I think it's it's something that, you know, as maybe a lot of people don't necessarily know about. And so it's our. Um, it's our opportunity to really use this technology to our advantage and to, I think, really optimize our life curve. And it's not something that the previous generations had. And so to me, it's just like when I think about it from that perspective, I just think like this is something that I'm not going to take my eye off for the rest of my life. And I'm going to be talking about it more and more. And if you know me personally, you know that I talk about it a lot because... I've come to, I guess, you know, you learn more about yourself over time, but like I've really come to realize like I really just value feeling good. That's one thing that I hold, you know, very, very high on the things that I value in life. And it's just feeling good, having optimal energy and being, being you know, happy and having fun. And it's almost like the more I lean into these categories, all those things improve. You know, I have more energy for everything at home with Julia and the kids and everything that we're doing and the, the direction we're going. And it's almost like it's just more fun to talk about and just kind of, I guess, plan all the things that we're working on. And um, 
Yeah, so I just... If you're not doing these things, why are you not doing them? That would be my question. 